All right, this, uh, we got the 11 o'clock update. It's now gone from a Category 3 to a Category 4. That's the forecast for landfall sometime between about sunrise and noontime tomorrow. A little bit more of an inch to the west in the track as well. So it's well west of Tampa and not a hard hit for the Florida Keys. But this is a live picture from Key West. You can see the sideways rain and some storm surge, maybe on the order of a couple of feet. But that pales in comparison to the storm surge forecast for the Big Bend region of 12 to 16 feet of water right in that part of Florida by tomorrow morning. So the eye is distinct on Storm Tracker. It's 125 miles west of Tampa and moving north almost at 20 miles per hour or so. The 11 o'clock advisory has it at 18 miles per hour to the north precisely. Still a category two at this minute, but it's strengthening rapidly. Should make landfall as a category four and then sharply curve out to the north and east and not impact too many people other than some boats once it goes over the southeastern U.S. But the forecast landfall is somewhere between Perry and Tallahassee as the major hurricane tomorrow morning. And it's the pink area with the forecast storm surge at a catastrophic level of 12 to 16 feet between Cedar Key and about St. Mark's there because it's always on the right side of the storm track. That's why we have the middle of the storm plotted so that you know where the hardest hit areas will be Tampa Bay only expecting three to six feet of surge. That's still impactful, but it is nowhere near like the worst of the storm. And we'll be following that as we go forward. For us, it's a quiet night on Merchants Row in Rutland. Love that shot there. 69 degrees at the airport. We've got most of us in the 60s to about 70, the exception being a 59 in Saranac Lake. And there'll be a couple showers overnight, but it turns into a pouring widespread rain first thing in the morning. This is 6 o'clock for northern New York. Then it quickly moves into Vermont for 8, 9, and 10 o'clock in the morning. And that moves out, but there's still a few showers and thunderstorms around in the afternoon tomorrow. But we'll mix in a little bit of sun in between. So it's drier and a little brighter later, but a lot brighter by the time Thursday comes around. It actually feels like fall on Thursday. We're stuck in the 60s with the sunshine and not a trace of humidity. All of that starts to change though by Friday and then definitely by Labor Day weekend. It turns into pretty much a scorcher by Labor Day and the day after with top level humidity and temperatures in the 90s. Now the other thing tomorrow is some flash flooding is possible once again as if we haven't had enough of this over the course of the summer. Not for everyone but the pockets of orange and red are one, two and possibly even three inches of rain in a short amount of time tomorrow. Uh, but the lake has been dropping off with the dry weather, a little bit of a pause perhaps after the rain tomorrow, but it is down to 98 feet, which is still three feet above average. But when you see the 10 day forecast, a quicker drop is expected because of all the dry weather on the way. So most of us in the 60s tonight, couple little showers around turning into that heavy rain tomorrow morning. So when most people step out the door, it's super wet and then it turns a little bit drier by afternoon. 75 for the high, only 69 on Thursday. Look what happens though, Friday and the weekend, 76 on Friday, 80 Saturday with a sprinkle and more clouds by Saturday evening. That shouldn't be a big deal though. It's just a washing out cold front. It doesn't really drop the temperatures though. 83 on Sunday. Then we've got 90 penciled in for Monday and for Tuesday of next week. We might have three 90s in a row. It's just too early to call that. But the humidity will be very high for Tuesday and Wednesday, especially, and then a front brings an end to all of that on Thursday of next week. Brian Alice.